everyone. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures, and thank you for tuning in today. In today's short video, we're going to go and demonstrate a new study that's been implemented within Sierra Charts, uh, also known as the Market Depth Historical Graph Study, uh, very similar to another function uh, that you may be familiar with called Bookmap. Uh, so in today's video, we're going to show you a short demonstration on how to apply that uh, indicator within Sierra Charts. All right, so let's get right into it. Let me first show you what the indicator looks like before I show, give you a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to apply the indicator onto your charts. Uh, this is, as you can see, uh, this is what the indicator looks like as it's laid over a mini S&P chart that I have at this moment. If you're not familiar with market depth, historical graph study, basically what it does, it, it will display each chart column uh, by the highest mark depth quantity at each price level, which occurred during the time frame of the chart bar. So it's represented by a color-coded rectangle, as you can see the yellow and blue prints on the chart there. Uh, this, this, this particular study will only work with an intraday chart within Sierra Charts. Uh, I was told from Sierra Charts that in an upcoming release, it's intended to, to also show multiple columns of market debt quantities per chart bar as you expand the bar spacing. So for further detail, the market debt activity at shorter time frames. So that's going to be something that they're looking to implement in upcoming build releases. So this is really new. Uh, so it's still a work in progress, but as of today, it is available uh, based on how you see it. All right, so also replay market data is also supported as well. If you want to use this particular uh, tool for market replay, you can also use that as well. Uh, so let's show you how to get in there and start applying this particular study onto Sierra Charts. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this chart. So I have a blank chart book. As you can see, I have no charts, nothing displayed at this very moment. So it's a clean slate. And we're going to show you now from the ground up how to apply the indicator. First thing I want to point out is you do have to have the most recent build in order for you to access this new indicator within Sierra Chart. So you have to have build version 1433 or higher. So if you're wondering what build do I have, what you're going to want to do is go to help in the, in the menu bar at the top, click on about, and you'll see version 1434. So it's 1433 or higher. So as you can see, I'm, I'm definitely above 1433, so I have no problem accessing the indicator. So if you're below 1433, now your next question is, how do I update to the most current build? Now, very simple. All you would need to do is click on the Help menu once again. Then you want to go and make sure you download the current version, as you can see right here. All right, when you left-click on that option, what happens is you will see here, of course, I don't, I've already had the latest build, so it's telling me there is no ver new, new version available. Let's say I'm using a build that's older, it will simply start to download that build in the background in the message log, and when that executable file is finished downloading, it will then prompt you to shut down Sierra Charts and go through the update process, which is going to be an automated wizard, which is going to be very straightforward. So all you would have to do is click install, there's going to be a button that says install, just hit next, 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 finish, and close, and that's pretty much it. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. If you do run into any complications, please give our 24-hour support team a call. We can walk you through the steps personally. However, it's pretty straightforward, so you shouldn't have a problem updating, so as long as you follow the instructions that I've just demonstrated. All right, once you update your build, then it's going to be required for you to restart Sierra Charts for the new build update to take effect, and then you're going to have to log right back in like you normally do to get to this section of the platform. All right, so that's the first thing. You have to make sure that you update your Sierra charts to 14 to a build that's 1433 or higher. I always say it's best to have the latest build anyway, so it's always best just by going to help, download current version, at least you know you're using the most up-to-date build of Sierra charts. All right, so you're going to knock that out first. Once that's done, then you're going to log back into Sierra charts. And now the next step is you want to go ahead and format the proper symbols for whichever symbols that you trade within Sierra Charts or just in general whatever symbols you trade. So the next step is now you want to connect your data feed as I have as I as I have here, as you can see. And now I'm going to go to click I'm going to click on global settings. Alright, once I click on global settings, then I'm going to want to click on symbol settings. Alright, this is you can see here. So once you do that, it's going to bring up global symbol settings dialog box. And then what it will normally do when you're connected to your data feed as I am it will automatically populate the service provider that you're connected to. So I'm using CQG as my data trial for Sierra Charts, so it's automatically configured it to show that as my service, as you can see. So if you're using Rhythmic Data Feed, for example, and you're connected to your data feed, and then you went to Global Settings and then Symbol Settings, then it should say Rhythmic instead of CQG, or if you're using TTNet Trading Technologies, then it will show that data feed instead. The main thing is making sure that under the service provider, it shows the data feed that you're connected to. And as I mentioned, it's so as long as you're connected to the data feed prior to going to Global Settings and then Symbol Settings, it will automatically allocate the proper service data feed in that field. All right, so now the next step is you want to, on the left side here, it will show you the entire Symbol uh, Dictionary list 
of the data feed that you're connected to. So you're going to have to scroll down the list and find the symbols that you trade. So if you're using CQG data feed, for example, uh, I'll scroll down the list here. You're going to see, let's say, there's going to be a lot of stuff here. So the easiest thing for me if you're using a CQG data feed is you want to find the section where it shows the F as in Frank dot US. Uh, that's uh, technically going to get you to the outright futures contracts for the CQG data feed. And then the next step is locating the symbol that you need to format. So for example, uh, let's say EP, which is the mini S&P contract, as you can see. All right, so once I've located the symbol, as I have, the next step you're going to do is you're going to click the intraday tab right here. So you'll see these little tabs here, general, historical, intraday, rollover, and so forth. You want to click on the intraday tab. All right, then normally, by default, when you're doing this for the very first time, I've already gone through these steps, but for the very first time, you will see that record market depth data function checkbox. That is going to be unchecked. All right, so that's usually the first time you're doing this. So you want to make sure now you check record market depth data. All right, so just make sure it's checked. And then I would probably go down the list, and if you trade any other markets, like for example the ENQ, then you may want to do that as well for the other markets that you trade. So just knock it down in one shot. Uh, that way you don't have to go back each time and do it one by one. Just go down the entire list. So if you trade 10 different markets, make sure you do the same exact thing for all 10 different markets that you trade. So short answer, make sure record market depth data is checked for all the markets that you trade. All right, so once that's done, you're going to click OK. Now it's been applied, but now you have to re reconnect your data feed in order for the changes to fully take effect. So there's, you can just either go to File, Disconnect here. You can see now I'm disconnected, or File, Connected Data Feed. All right, I don't want to say or, but that's what you'd have to do after you disconnect to make sure that that change fully takes effect. So make sure you disconnect the data feed and then reconnect it. Now that I've done that, I'm connected. I can see that because I have a green confirmation at the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up a chart of the symbol that I want to apply the study for. So let's just say the September mini S&P contract here. I already have it populated. So as I mentioned again, you can only do this for an intraday chart. So it's not going to work for a historical chart. So I'm going to click intraday chart. I'm going to wait for that data to load. Okay, I'm going to change this to a candlestick chart so it looks a little more presentable. All right, now we have our chart open. We don't have the indicator added just yet. All right, so now uh, this is under the assumption that you didn't have a chart open, so I had to create a chart first. If you already have existing chart books, you've been using Sierra charts for quite some time, most likely you already have charts open. So just simply locate the chart that you want to apply the study for within your chart book. All right, so now I have a, a chart open. I'm going to now right-click on the chart and go to Studies. All right, there's two ways of accessing the Studies menu. You can either right-click on the chart and go to Studies, or you can go to Anal uh, Analyst and click on Studies up here. I find it easier just right-clicking on the chart and go to Studies. All right, now the next step, all the studies are listed in alphabetical order. So what I normally do is I, I click on the top indicator, which is 1 divided by price. And the best way for me to locate the market depth historical graph study is I just simply start typing it on my keyboard, keyboard after I've selected the top indicator listed here. As you can see, it's highlighted. Now I'm going to type in market, and you see how it just takes me there right away, market depth historical graph study. All right, now... This is the, one of the common mistakes that a lot of customers make is they'll just hit apply thinking the indicator is added, but that's not the case. You have to add it first to the studies to graph section in order for you to apply it. So I'm going to hit add, make sure it's highlighted, hit add. Now you can see there's a confirmation of that study being added for studies to graph, and that's how you know that you've actually added the indicator. All right, and now a couple of things I want to point out once you have the indicator added. If you've been using Sierra charts for quite some time, you probably have an understanding how to adjust the indicator or make changes for example, changing input values just by clicking the settings menu here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that just to show you what it looks like. And there's a, a bit of a restriction here. You can't change the input values of the indicator. I'm guessing that was done on purpose mainly because this is a brand new indicator that's, uh, that's been implemented within Sierra Charts. So those are probably preset input values for the indicator to display properly on your chart. I'm not 100% sure of that. I'll have to verify that. But I do know the only changes that you can make for this specific indicator is just the colors. So if you click on it, you can see that I can change the color, whether it's blue or any other color I want to change it to, or in this case, yellow for the ask color, if I want to change it to any other color. What I normally do first is I throw the indicator on the chart to see what it looks like. If I'm not happy with the colors, then I'll go back and make the changes. So for now, I'm just going to leave everything as default, and I just want to at least show you what the settings option looks like. For now, I'm going to click OK, and now we're going to go and apply the indicator onto the chart. And that's what the market depth historical graph study looks like.
All right, so as you can see, there's the blue and yellow code confirmations. Uh, if you're, again, if you're not uh, happy with those colors, then you can always go back, right-click on the chart, go to Studies. You'll see the indicator that you have added on your existing chart. You click on Settings, and then you can click here and make your changes and change the colors accordingly. All right, so for myself, I'm just going to leave them as default. I'm happy with the colors. They look fine for myself. Everybody's different. So the main thing is understanding where to go to make those changes. And that is a quick demonstration on how to add the market depth historical graph study within Sierra Charts, a, a new uh, function that has been implemented, I believe, just over the weekend. So if you have any questions about this, guys, please contact our 24-hour support team at 312-893-6400, extension 1. That gets you directly to our 24-hour help desk. Uh, we'd be happy to walk you through these steps um, step by step. 24 hours a day, get you going and accessing this new tool. Otherwise, guys, stay up to date on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Again, that's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Thank you for listening in, and happy trading, guys.